Hello, hello everybody. It is Crystal. How's everybody doing today? I hope you everybody's doing well and staying safe. So today I'm going to show you how to make this very easy. As long as you know the basic stitches, I'm going to show you how to do the rest. I mean, here's a front post stitch, but it's not hard to do. I'll teach you how to do it. So it's actually quite easy and I think it'd be good for a beginner, even if you know, as long as you know the basic stitches. Um, this is the baby blanket. My husband actually did crochet this, except for the edging, I did crochet that. And let's see, it measures about 32 by 32, but you can make yours as big as you want. You just continue um, the repeat row and as for as long as you want. And then if you want to put the white, uh, an edge on it like I did, um, you can do that too. But I'll go ahead and show you what I used. Remember, uh, it's, it's actually a square. It's not rectangle. I have more room I'd show you, but I don't. So I need I, I need a bigger space. Bigger space, bigger space. But that's kind of what it looks like. It's just a square. Um, the edging is, uh, it's a very gender, gender and neutral blanket if you're using it for a baby blanket. This as far as stitch wise goes. Um, you can see there it's post here and then when i went to the edgy i kind of catty quartered them different from the main part of the blanket so um yeah you guys want to go ahead and get started i'm going to ask you please not to forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed don't forget to subscribe to bag o day crochet on youtube you should hit it now turn on your notifications i got hundreds of crochet tutorials and i do them once or twice a week and i do yarn content um like all the time i talk about new yarns i do yarn reviews i talk about new yarn stores i just try to teach people about yarn and crochet and what i love so hit that hit that subscribe button come follow me on instagram too that way if you make this or anything else do you want to show me i mean not even my stuff anything anything at all that you made crochet knitted fiber arts yarn hauls anything you can hashtag bag o day crochet and I would love to see it. So let's so let's go ahead and get started on this baby blanket here. I wish I could show you better, but I'm limited on space. Okay, for this project, uh, we use uh, Bernat Baby Blanket Sparkle. It's actually at the making of this video, which is 328-2021. It is a newer yarn um, from Bernat, the Sparkle. It has the sparkle in it. Now it is the it is a super bulky number six. Now you do not have to use a super bulky number six. You can use any weight of yarn that you want, any brand of yarn that you want, because um, it's very easy. It starts out as a square and it just grows. So no matter what size of yarn that you're using, or what variety of yarn you're using or what blend of yarn you're using, this one's polyester, you can make it as big as you want. So that's completely up to you. You do not have to use this yarn, but this is what I use. The color of the yellow is called Sunshine Sparkle. It is a 100% polyester yarn. And there are 220 yards per ball. I used two balls of the yellow color. And then I also have for the edging, um, I used the same brand. The color is called Moonlight Sparkle. Isn't that pretty? Oh, you can see those sparkles really well there. And they're not at all itchy at all. It's a, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a fan of blanket yarn, but add some sparkle to it. it makes me like it more. <laughs> it's really pretty. But, uh, this is what I have left of that, of the edging. So, if you're using a six weight like me, um, you're probably going to need about... Um, so I said for the, my main color, I used almost two balls. So probably, you know, just if you're using a six weight and you're not using this brand, uh, probably 230 yards. And then, oh, I'm sorry. And then of the edging, you're probably going to need, I used um, probably 150 yards of a six weight. Now, if you're using a different weight of yarn, I'm not sure how much you'll need on that. But remember, any weight will work. And for the six weight, I used an in which is a nine millimeter some ends are 10 millimeters either one will work again if you're using a 
uh, smaller yarn. I think if you're going to be using a bulky five, I would use a six and a half. I would recommend a six and a half. If you're using a four weight, I would recommend a six millimeter. And if you're going to use a three weight, I would probably recommend a, um, a five millimeter for that. But again, you can adjust those accordingly to how you like it how stitch how tight your stitches and everything well let's do this let's go ahead and get started on this I'll show you how easy it is okay so remember we just start off with the square it's just a square very easy square too and then it grows and it grows so we're going to go ahead and start off with a slip knot on our hook and now we're going to work a chain of four one two three and four. Now I'm going to go back and slip stitch into that first stitch that I made to form a ring. And we're gonna be working through that ring. I like to take my middle finger and kind of stick it in there like that while I slip stitch. That way it keeps my ring open like that. So it doesn't shut up on me. So now I have my ring there. Now what I'm gonna do is chain three now that chain three is going to count as a double crochet here and for the rest of the pattern now i'm going to go back into the ring and i'm going to work two more double crochets so right through the ring i just yarn over and i go right through that center draw my yarn back up pull it through and then do a double crochet and then i'm going to do that again so i'm going to yarn over Go right through that that center circle there pull my yarn back up through the center and then finish out do my double crochet so and you can slide them over as you go to make room for all the stitches we're going to put in the ring so counting that chain three which we said was a double we now have three double crochets there now we're going to put a point because this is a square a large square and it has four points so we're going to make a chain two which is going to count is going to be our point and we are going to go back into the same ring and do three double crochets so we're going to yarn over go in and do three doubles so there's one two and there's three like that i'm going to pull them over a bit so I can have room and now I'm going to make another chain two which is going to be a point again like that and then through the ring again three more doubles there's one two and there's three okay one more time chain two it makes another point and we're going to go back through and work three more doubles again so you might want to pull them over make sure you get room there one two and three so now we have four sets of three double crochet now we are going to end this a little bit differently um so we're not going to chain two and and slip stitch to end some people do that i don't normally i do that sometimes but not normally so how we're going to end this is we are going to do a half double crochet into the top of our first double crochet which is our chain three here so i'm going to yarn over and i'm going to go into the top of that first chain three and half double crochet half double so we go through like that all three of them just like that so that is going to count as our chain two space and what that has done is brought us right into the center of this chain two space so we don't have to involve any slip stitching to create any uh break in a pattern because sometimes slip stitches if you can keep from doing having to do a bunch of those um sometimes a bunch of those will make your pattern look wonky especially if you're using a thicker yarn like this so uh to eliminate that uh slip stitching we are just going to half double at the end into our first top of my first chain three okay 
Now, row two is going to be the repeat row. I'll repeat it a couple times just so you get the hang of it. So we're gonna start out in this very first spot here. We're always gonna start it out the same. We're gonna do a chain three, which counts as a double crochet. And then we're gonna go right back through this space and we're gonna work one more double crochet. Just like that. Okay, now the next stitch after the, the space, we are going to do a front post double crochet. So all that is, is we yarn over, it's just a regular double crochet, but instead of going into the top of the stitch, we go around the post like that. And then I always take my work and kind of fold it, and then just do your double crochet like normal. Very easy to do once you get the hang of it. Now the next stitch, we're just going to put a regular double crochet in the top of the next stitch. So I'm gonna yarn over and go into the top of the next stitch and do a regular double crochet. Now the next stitch will be a front post double crochet again. So again, we're gonna yarn over and we're going to go around the post of the next stitch, not into the top of it, like that. I like to squeeze my work. It's just easier for me to, to get a hang of it. Yarn over and do your double crochet like normal. There we go. Now we're at our chain two space. Now you'll always end in a front post double crochet right before your chain two space. That's how you know you did it right. So in this chain two space, and in every chain two space besides the first one, they're all gonna be the same. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the chain two space and we're gonna work two double crochets. There's one, and then there's two. You might need to slide them over a bit. And then we're gonna chain two, which creates our corner again. And then we're gonna go back into the same chain two space and work two more double crochets. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna start off again. Now we always are gonna start off after our corner with a front post double crochet. We always end in one before the corner and we always start off in one after the corner. So I'm gonna yarn over. I'm gonna go around that for the post of that first stitch, just like that. And then I'll just do my double crochet like normal. And then I'm going to do a regular double crochet into the top of the next. And then a front post double crochet right here into the last one here before my chain two space. So I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna go around the post of it, not the top. And then just do a just do my double crochet like normal. Like that. And now we are at our chain two space. And the chain two space is always the same except for the first one. We go into it and we work two double crochets. chain of two, slide that over if, if need be, like that, and two more doubles. So two doubles, chain two, two doubles, and there we go, like that. Okay, again, we're gonna start out with a front post double crochet in the first stitch. A regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then a front post double crochet around the next stitch. And now we're at our next chain two space. So we're gonna go into it and we're gonna work two doubles. A chain of two and two more double crochets, all into that same chain two space. Like 
that. Okay, now we're going to start off again with a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. A regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch. Front post a double crochet here around the last stitch here. And now we are at the end. Okay, this is how we end. Okay, this is how we're going to end our rounds. We're going to go back into this chain two space here. So we worked here in the beginning, we worked a chain three, which counted as a double. And then we went back into that space and we did another double crochet. So in, in order to make it match the other ones, we need to go into this chain space and work two double crochets. Like that. And now instead of the chain two, we are going to end by half double crocheting into the top of this beginning chain three that's how we always end like i said that that's going to eliminate any slip stitching um that we're going to have to do for now so yarn over go into the top of that beginning chain three and work a half double crochet and that is going to act as our chain two space so there it is that's row two so we're going to repeat row two We're going to do it again. Now, the only thing that's going to be different is it's just going to keep getting bigger. Every round will have 16 more stitches than the previous round because you're putting four stitches in each of the four corners. So that'll make it grow 16 stitches every round. So now we're going to start again. This, remember, this is how we always start. We're right here where we just did this half double crochet, which is kind of acting like a chain two space. So we're going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Go back into this space here and work one double crochet. Now we're going to continue on with the pattern that we did on round two. So remember, we start with a front post double crochet into the first stitch after any corner here. So we're going to go ahead and start by putting a front post double crochet in the first stitch. And, and then we're going to put a regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch. So it's just a front post double crochet, regular double crochet repeat is all it is until you get to your chain two space. And you can see the post stitches, they'll start to line up the more rows that you do. So I just did a regular double crochet. So now my next stitch needs to be a front post double. And you can see this front post double from the previous row. That's where you wanna put it. You wanna make your post stitches line up. Next stitch is a regular double crochet into the top of the next. Next stitch is a front post double crochet and you can see this is a front post double crochet from the previous row. Go right around it, front post double. And you can kind of see, like I said, it'd be more visible the more rows you do, your post stitch is starting to take place regular double crochet into the next and remember you're always your last stitch before the chain two space is always a front post double crochet and then we go into the chain two space and we work the same as we do all the chain two spaces except for our first one and it's two double crochets A chain of two and two more double crochets all into the same chain two space like that and now we start again so remember we always end with the front post double crochet before our chain two space and then we start with a front post double crochet after our chain two space so we're going to go ahead and do a front post double crochet into the next stitch 
and then a regular double crochet into the top of the next. And we're going to repeat this pattern until we get to our next chain two space. And you can see front post double crochet, you can see the, the one from the previous row, just go right around it. And regular double crochet. Front post double crochet. And regular double. And the last stitch before the chain two space will be a front post double crochet. And then in the chain two space, we do the same thing and we do two doubles. Chain two, two doubles. That start again, front post double crochet into that first stitch. And then a regular double crochet into the top of the next. And we repeat this front post double crochet, regular double crochet until we get to the next chain two space. Last stitch is always going to be a front post double crochet. And then in your chain two space, two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. And again, start off with a front post double crochet around the post of the first stitch here. Regular double crochet, repeat that. Front post double crochet, regular double crochet, repeat. Always make sure your post stitches are lined up. That's the main thing you have to worry about with this pattern is just keeping everything lined up. Your front post stitches will always line up on top of each other and your regular double crochets will always line up on top of each other. Front post double crochet into the last stitch here before your chain space. Okay, I'm at the start or beginning or the end of the beginning. Um, here's where we started. So we did the chain three and then we put one more double crochet into that chain space. So what we're going to do to end to make it match the other corners is we're going to go ahead and put two double crochets into that chain space. So now we have two doubles and then the two doubles over here that we started with. Now we're going to end by putting a half double crochet into the top of the beginning chain three, which counts as our chain two, just like that. And that is what we're gonna repeat. We'll chain three, go back into that chain space, and do one double crochet, and then start out with a front post double crochet, regular double crochet. Um, repeat all the way around. Keep doing that. Remember, you'll have 16 more stitches every time. And always make sure your posts are lined up. It's the main thing you have to worry about. But you can do this for as big as you want it to be. Okay, so you continue for however big you want your blanket to be. As many rows as you want. You can make it a big, big square or just a small one. It's completely up to you. I went through two balls of my um, yarn that I was using in the yellow. Um, there's just a little bit left, not enough to go around again. But now I'm going to stop and put a border on mine. But you continue for as long as you want until uh, you get it as big as you want. And then you can put the border on if you want. It's actually similar to what we're going to do. So whenever you decide you got your piece big enough and we're going to end the round, we're going to end it a little different when I change colors. So I did my I'm in my chain two space and I did my two double crochets and usually I would do my half double into the top of the chain three right like we did that's like we've been doing 
Um, instead of doing that, I'm going to go ahead and do a chain of two. And slip stitch into the top of my chain three. This is because I'm switching colors. And then I'm going to clip this yarn and tie off. Okay, that's what you want to do after you uh, get your blanket as big as you want it to be. And if you want to switch colors um, for the border. So now I'm going to use white for the border. Now the border I'm doing is relatively similar to the stitch that we've been doing. It's just going to kind of be done in a different uh, way, I guess. Uh, ca catty corner. Catty corner is the, is the word that I'm looking for. So, but otherwise it's done the same. So I'm just going to start right here in the same spot that we just uh, stopped in. And I, I have my white here. So I'm going to go into this chain two space. Okay. Now I'm going to start by chaining three, which counts as a double crochet. I'm going to go back into that same chain two space and put one double crochet. So that's how we're going to start the border, just like that. Now, normally before we would start our row off after the chain space, chain two spaces or after the corner with a front post double crochet. But now I want to do it kind of catty cornered. So I'm going to start it with a regular double crochet. So I'm going to go right into the top of this. It's actually a chain three from the previous row and just do a regular double crochet like that. Now my next stitch is going to be a front post double crochet. And then my next will be a regular double crochet. And it's actually the post stitch from the previous row. But I'm going to work on top of that post stitch and do a regular double crochet. And then the next stitch, which is, is going to be a front post double crochet, is actually a regular double crochet from the previous row. So it's the same thing that we were do doing before, except for it's we're making the posts catty cornered from each other. So front post double crochet around the next stitch, which is just a regular double crochet from the previous row, and then a regular double crochet in the top of the next stitch, which is actually a front post double from the previous row. So when you look, well, I'm going to do a few rows of this. You'll see that the You'll see it better once you get uh, another row on or so. But the posts are now catty cornered. So I'm going to continue this method. It's what we've been doing all along, except for, like I said, we're just doing it um, opposite. Where we used to post stitch, we are now going to uh, double crochet. And where we used to double crochet, we're going to now post stitch. And in the corners, it's the same thing. Oops, I'm messing up. No, I'm not. I got confused. <laughs> so I'm gonna continue my uh, double crochet, uh, front post double crochet repeat until I get to my next chain two space. And we're gonna work that the same as we did all the others, but I'll meet you there and we'll just go over it together. Okay, so I've come to the corner, and remember, it's okay still if your piece is slipping up. We'll take care of that here in a bit. So, the corner's done the same, except for, remember, when we were doing our main collar and we weren't doing the border, we would always end in a front post double crochet. Since we're doing it opposite in our caddy corner, now we're just going, going to be ending in a regular double crochet. And then we go into the corner, the chain two space, and we work two doubles. chain two and two more doubles one two and then you the next stitch since we started with the ended with the uh, regular double crochet over here we start with the regular double crochet so that's the only difference really between what we're doing than what we did before 
So I'm going to continue doing this all the way around until I get back to my starting point. And I'll meet back up with you there. Okay, so I have come to the end here in my first row of edging. I'm, I'm going to add another row just like we just did. So here I am at the corner. My last stitch was just a regular double crochet. And now I'm going to go into this corner. Since we did the two in the beginning, I'm going to go ahead and put two more double crochets into this chain space. Remember, it's similar to what we did when we were working with the main color, the yellow that I used. And I'm going to end by half doubling into the top of my chain three. Like that. And now I'm back at the, in the middle here. So I'm going to go around again, just doing the same thing. I'm going to start with a chain three. And I'm going to go back into that same spot and do a double crochet. And I'm going to start out again with a regular double crochet. Sorry about, sorry about that. Hopefully I didn't make anybody vomit. Okay, so I'm going to start out again with a regular double crochet into my first stitch, which is actually that chain three space from the previous round. And, and then I will do a front post double crochet. and then a regular double crochet. So now on the second round of the edging, your post will line up will line up with your first round. Because we did them opposite yellow, but they're still going to line up now. The white's going to line up now. So I just did a double crochet, which was the double crochet from the previous row. Now I'm going to do a front post double crochet and this front post double crochet. So only on this first row of edging would your post not line up with the post from the previous round. Now we're going to line them up again. So if you're following along they should line up just fine. Front post double and regular double. Front post double and regular double. So I'm going to continue this all the way around, just repeating what we just did. Double crochet, front post, double crochet, double crochet, front post. Just remember now, um, on the second row of the edging or the border, your posts will line up, see? But when you go back to your main color here, they don't line up. That's what you want, just catty cornered. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat this all the way around so I make it back over here to uh, where we started. I'll meet back up with you right over here. All right, so I've made it to the end of my second round of edging. I'm, not, I'm going to finish out now. That's all the edging I'm going to do. Um, if you want to do more, you're more than welcome to do as many rows as you'd like. So now we're going to do one row to take care of this little flip up here. And that's going to be a round of single crochet. So here I am at the end. I did my two double crochets in this last chain two space. And again, I'm going to end this round by half double crocheting into the beginning of chain three. That way I'm in the middle. So now we're going to be working single crochets. So I'm going to chain one. Now that chain one is not going to count as a stitch. It's not going to count as anything. We're just going to pretend like it's not there. I'm going to go into this spot and I'm going to work three single crochets. So there's one, two, and there is three. That's just in that first spot there. Now I'm going to work one single crochet in the top of every stitch all the way around. So make sure you get this first stitch, which is actually that chain three from the previous round and work one single crochet in every stitch until you get to your next chain two space or your next corner. So you can see I'm just working into the top of every stitch working one single crochet and that's gonna help control that flip up from the post stitches. It's gonna help level it and help lay it down. 
So I'm going to continue putting one single crochet. Yeah, you see that makes that nice. It makes it lay a little bit flatter um, until I get to my next chain two space uh, or the next corner. And when I make it there, I'll meet back up with you and I'll show you what we're going to do on each of the corners each of the remaining corners that is so just continue one single crochet in the top of every stitch this is our last final um, I call it the cleanup edge just like that all right so I've made it to my chain two space here did a single crochet in the top of that last stitch so here we are and we're gonna work five single crochets into this chain two space so there's one, two, three, you might have to slide them over a bit to get them all to fit, four, we just want to make sure our corners lay flat, and there's five. Now we're going to get this next stitch, sometimes it gets hidden by the single crochet, so pull them over and make sure you hit that next stitch with the single crochet, because we don't want our count to be off, or we don't want it to be lopsided actually. And then I'm going to continue around, putting one single crochet in every stitch. And then it'll be five single crochets in every corner until we get to the end. And I'll show you how we will end it. Now, I know we only put three into the first one. That's fine. We'll take care of that when we get back around. So that's what that kind of looks like there. Straighten them out. Makes a nice uh, rounded flat corner so here I go all the way around one single crochet in every stitch five single crochets in each of the corners or the chain two spaces until we make it back to our starting point and that's where I'll meet you up at and that's where I'll show you how we're gonna in this all finish it out yeah that's taking care of that flip up giving it a nice clean edge corners aren't popping up nice nice I like it all right I've made it to the end or beginning whichever one you want to call it <laughs> so remember here is the chain two space now remember in the when we started this round we did that chain one which I said we're going to pretend like it doesn't count as anything and then we did three single crochets now we're going to end by doing it two more single crochets into the same spot so we'll have a total of five single crochets which is what we put in the other corners and now we're going to go ahead and in finish this round off by slip stitching into our first single crochet that we made not the chain one but the first single and we are going to slip stitch into it pull your yarn up and we are pulled up a little bit and then we're going to clip it off and then we will need to hide any remaining tails okay so we clipped the yarn and now what we're gonna do is pull it through now if you have a big like yarn needle you can use that to hide your tail if you don't have one I'll show you how you can do it with your hook um, you can use a smaller hook actually is what I'll do just one a little bit smaller and you can just hide your tail like this with this big yarn sometimes it's hard not everybody has those big yarn needles that work well for this big thick yarn so you can hide it actually using your hook just by weaving it in through the back side like this um, just kind of like you do with your yarn needle but we're just using a hook instead so you just do this to with all your tails but by all means if you have a big uh, yarn needle with a big eye on it you can use that too I do have one of those but I just wanted to show those who didn't have one how easy it is to hide the tails of these big thick yarns with just a smaller crochet hook by doing the, basically the same thing weaving it in and out underneath your stitches so I'm gonna have to finish up hiding all my tails up all right it is finished now it's hard to show you because I never have a lot of room space but I think it turned out quite nice and like I said, in the beginning, like I said, it's very easy if you're a beginner to follow along with this tutorial. It makes something that looks a little complicated with the ridges, but actually it's not at all complicated once you get to stitch down. And it's very pretty. I think it turned out really well. I like, you know, I like that sparkle yarn. It's beautiful. I wish you could see it a little bit better, but 
But that's it. I hope you enjoy my tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button for more tutorials. Remember, and also check on my channel because I have hundreds and hundreds of tutorials already. I do lots of yarn talk, which means I unbox lots of yarn, lots of new yarns, talk about um, new yarn places, talk about new yarns. I'm just, I like to talk about yarn and I do crochet tutorials and that's what I do. So if you like that kind of stuff, um, hopefully you will enjoy my channel. Remember, subscribe. Don't forget to tell everybody. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a good day. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this baby blanket here. Now it is very easy. It would be great for a beginner or a novice at crochet. Um, it's just all single crochet. So as long as you know how to do a chain and a single crochet, you'll be able to do this video and make this make a very very nice uh baby gift for somebody you know so it's a great beginner project and even if you're not a beginner it still makes a beautiful blanket so i mean advanced you're more than welcome to follow along it's super easy so let's go ahead and get started okay for this project i used um caron the jumbo rolls it's a uh, hundred percent medium weight acrylic and it is it's soft for for baby the color I use is called Baby Rainbow, and let's see here. Now there are 595 yards per skein. I use two, almost two whole skeins. This is all I have left. Let me scoot this over. Of my two skeins. There's two skeins. So if you, I don't know, you should have enough. But I can't say for certain if you maybe if you crochet a little tighter than me. I don't know if that takes up more yarn or not. But but I went through two skeins and this is what I have left of the two skeins. So two skeins was enough for me. And if you want to tie it up like mine is, you're gonna need um, some ribbon here. This is a five eighth inch of it. Five eighth inch. There's 18 feet in here. I don't know if I'll use all 18 feet of it, but. But it, that's the size I use. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to use both skeins at the same time. So we're going to take our two strands, both skeins, just pull from the center of both of them like this and use both skeins at the same time. And we're going to use, we're going to need a size Q which is a 15.75 millimeter crochet hook. Now you want to take both strands and make a slip knot on your hook. Now I already have my big piece done, so I'm going to show you on a smaller scale. But you will need to do a chain of 58. So you just go ahead and start making your chain. The only thing about using two strands is you just want to make sure that you're getting both strands when you're going through your stitches. Okay, now remember you want to make a chain of 58. I'm just going to show you on a little bit smaller scale. But once you get your chain of 58 done, we're going to do a single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. Now remember, we don't count this one that's on our hook. So there's this one and this one. This is number two. Go ahead right into it and do a single crochet. And remember to grab both loops that are on. Grab both pieces of yarn that are on your hook and do your single crochet. And we're going to put one single crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain. And they're going to be big, airy stitches because we're using the big hook. And if you've never used the big hook before, it will take a little time to get used to it. But you'll get a hang of it. It does tend to make your hands hurt a bit if you crochet with it for too long. In my experience, it does, especially using two strands at once. But you'll get it. So it's one single 
in every stitch for the length of your chain. Making sure you're getting both loops or both pieces, both strands of yarn when you go through your loops. You don't want to come out the other end and only have one strand on your hook. So continue doing the one single crochet until you get to the end of your row. Okay, when you make it to the end of row one, you should have a total of 57 single crochets. 57. And that's the number you should have at the end of every row that we do. So what we're going to do for row two is chain one. Row two is the repeat row, which means it's the row that we repeat that we repeat for the whole project. So we chain one and then we turn. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch. Some crocheters make it count as a stitch. I do not count it as a stitch hardly ever. If I ever do, I'll tell you, but rarely do I count this chain one as a stitch. So since I'm not counting as a stitch, I gotta go directly into this very first stitch right here and make my first single crochet. Just like that. And now I'm going to work my way across, putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get to the end of row two. And remember, it's going to be your stitches will be kind of gappy. It's supposed to be like that because we're using the large hook. So don't worry about that if that's happening. That's normal. Just make sure when you go through each stitch, and you pull up your loop that you still have your two strands of yarn on your hook. You don't want to lose a strand somewhere. So just continue doing one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of row two. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row two in my last stitch here. I need to go right into that. Oops. Go into the last stitch like that and you still should have 57 single crochets. Now all we do is repeat row two. So for row three, we're gonna chain one and turn our work just like we did for row Two. And remember this does not chain one does not count as a stitch. It does not count as anything. So we got to go directly into this very first stitch to start our row right there. And single crochet there. And now it's one single crochet in every stitch across until you get to the end of the row. So it's really easy. Like I said, if you're a beginner and you know how to do single crochets, you should be able to do this blanket and it makes a very pretty gift. So continue one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of row three. Okay, I made it to the end of row three and I have my 57 stitches. So now I'm just gonna keep repeating what we're doing. So we're going to chain one and turn. Chain one does not count as anything. So we got to go in this very first stitch and single crochet. And you single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. Now when, every time you get to the end of the row you should always have 57 single crochets. So we're just going to keep repeating that row two like we're doing, we're on row four now, until we reach a total of 75 rows. And remember I said it's going to be, it's going to be an airy blanket so it has finger holes in it and that's how it's supposed to be. Don't worry about it and think that you're doing something wrong. So keep repeating row two like we've been doing for a total of 75 rows. 57 stitches should be at the end of every row. And then I'll go ahead and show you how to put an edging on it. 
Okay, once you got your 75 rows done, and remember you can make it bigger if you want. You'll just need more yarn than what I said in the beginning of the video. What we're going to do is go around all the edges, all four edges, with a row of single crochet just to clean them up and make them look real nice. So I just finished my 75th row, so I'm going to do a chain of one. Now I'm going to go right here into this next spot. We're going to work down this long side first and put a single crochet right into that. So right into that spot and single crochet. And then I'm going to go right here to the next spot, kind of right in between these two spaces and single crochet. And again, this next little hole right here and single crochet. Now I'm going to do that all the way down this long side of the blanket. And that's going to make the edge look nice and clean. Again, right through this hole, just go right through it and single crochet. And then the next one, single crochet. And then the next little hole here, and single crochet. Next one, just like that. And you can see it makes the edge look a lot nicer and cleaned up. Especially if you're going to give it as a gift, you want it to look really nice. So I'm going to continue doing this all the way down my long side and I'll meet you when I get to the end of this long side at the corner. Okay, I've made it down the long side and I'm right down here at the corner and you can see this is where we first started because there's our long tail. Now right here in this corner stitch, I want to put three single crochets in the corner. That way it'll round the corner nicely and lay flat. So there's one. I want to put three in the same stitch. Two. And then one more. Makes three. And now I'm going to work along this short side here. Continuing putting one single crochet in every stitch. Now you'll be able to see the stitches pretty well, just right here through these holes. And you want to try to hide this tail as you go, if you can. That way there's not so many tails to hide later. But I just kind of hold it back there. And then when I do my single crochet, I just make sure it's right behind it. And that's going to hide it as you go, and you won't have to sew it in later, which is always a plus. No one likes sewing in tails. I don't anyways. So I'm going to continue putting one single crochet in every stitch along the bottom or along the short side. And as you can see when you put one single cro or three single crochets in a corner, it made it nice and rounded so it lays flat. If you didn't put if you just put the one, it would kind of flip up. So put, by putting three, you made it look lay flat. So just like this, one single in every stitch, and I'm going to meet you at the next corner. Okay, I, I have made it to my next corner, and what we're going to do is we're just going to put three single crochets into this last corner stitch here. So right here. So just go ahead and put three single crochets in it. There's one, two, three, and then go ahead and continue down the long side again, putting one single crochet in each one of these little holes here in between the stitches. Just like we did on the other long side. here and right here so it's one single on every stitch and then I'll meet you at the next corner when we get finished with this other long side 
Okay, I've made it up my other long side and I'm up here at the corner again. This corner right here and I want to go ahead and put three single crochets into that corner. So one, two, and three. Now I'm going to work one single crochet in every stitch across the top. And you'll be able to see right where it goes until I get to my starting point where we started going around. So you can be able to see the stitches really easy now. So one single crochet in every stitch here across the top and I'll meet you at the end when we get to the corner where we started earlier. When we first started going around it and edging it. Okay, I have made it back to where I started. This is my last stitch and here's that chain one we did and then we started working single crochets on the side. So I'm going to put three single crochets into this last stitch here. Oh. That. Now we're going to skip that chain one right there and we're going to slip stitch into the very first single crochet we did. It's kind of along the side. So this is the chain one. Right there is the first single crochet we did. And we want to slip stitch into that. And then we can clip our yarn and hide our tails. Okay. Now the front side the both sides of the blanket look similar except for the edging is going to be the right side of the edging you can see the right side here and then when you flip it you can see the wrong side it's not much of a difference but if you're going to fold it up nice and neat you want to make sure the right side of the edging is facing you so i'm going to go ahead and take my yarn needle and i am going to weave in my tails to the back side of the blanket the where the wrong side of the um edging is facing. So you want to make sure you weave them in pretty good since it's a baby blanket and it's probably going to be washed and wallered around and stuff so I kind of just weave them all over the place over and under stitches because I don't want nothing coming undone in the washer because then <sighs> That's the worst. It's hard to fix once that happens. And once you feel like your tail's pretty tight and you don't think it's going to come undone, you can just go ahead and clip it off. Sorry if I was out of screen there. Okay, that's probably good for me. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that off. Now, earlier, the other tails, I hid them as I was going. Remember, I was crocheting them in so I just give them a nice tug there make sure they're tight and then I'm gonna go ahead and clip them off because I went uh, pretty far down so I know they're not gonna come undone and that's it so I'm gonna set my yarn to the side and I'm gonna see if I can get it folded up real good here okay for the ribbon I don't have a lot of dash room but I'll try to show you the best that I can here let me get my camera adjusted so it's gonna be from the side a little bit but I folded mine it's still a pretty big blanket even folded like this but I folded mine um, in half long ways and then in half again. Make sure the um, good side of your edging is facing up. Get all the corners nice and straight. Now if you want to fold it again, you can. That is completely up to you. I might do that. But I think what I'll do is take it and I'll fold it flip it over and I'm going to fold it where these edges right here are facing up. So I'm going to make sure all my corners are straight together. 
That way it's not so hard to get a ribbon around it to be so big, but there we go. Get it all nice and straight. You want it to look nice for if you're gifting it. Which this is going. This is going to somebody, so I want it to look nice. So now you take your ribbon. And this is the front of my work. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna put the ribbon leave a lot of ribbon over here on this side at least half of it and I'm just gonna flip it over like that now I'm on the back side so now I'm gonna cross my ribbons like that and then I'm gonna flip it back over to the right side flip it again and now you'll probably have to straighten up your corners again and all your edging before you tie it off I hope you can see this. I can't really look at the camera and do it at the same time, so I'm kind of just hoping that it's in the right in the right frame. And then you just take it. You probably have a lot of extra yarn, but and then if you need to cut some of it off off to tie a bow, you can. But then you just take it, make sure everything's nice and neat, tucked in, and tie a bow here. Now, I'm not the best at tying bows, so you may not want to watch me. I'm really pretty bad at it, but I just kind of take it. Go around. You'll probably have to fiddle with it for a while to get it right. I always do. But I've got a fly over here bugging me in my video. So, kind of like that. And since it's a big blanket, I'll probably leave the big, big bow on it. And now... You want to take your scissors and cut off these at an angle however long you want them to be. And that's it really. That's all there is to it for your baby blanket gift. So I went ahead and found my scissors and I just clipped them off about down to here. Just a little ways. But that's it. That's all there is to it. And then you can kind of mess around with it a little bit more and get it all nice and straight. But I'm going to move my camera now so I don't get... You know, that's it. That's all there is to it. Very and there it is. Now, you, that's a nice baby gift. And it would, I mean, anybody would love to receive that. And it'd be great. I mean, it's great for beginners if you're just learning to crochet. Um, I think it turned out really well. Now, um, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I got hundreds of other tutorials you can check out. And if you watched this video and you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and maybe a share on Pinterest and Facebook. But until next time, have a good day. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this baby blanket here. Here's the stitch. It's very pretty. Now the stitch that I use is called the Candy Clover Stitch. And it's not hard at all. It just uses basic uh, single and double crochets. So the size of my blanket measures approximately uh, pretty close to 32 inches wide and 42 inches long. But I think it turned out really nice. I didn't put no edge on mine. Now, if you want to, you decide to. You could put any type of edge that you'd like. If you want to put like a ruffle edge or a single crochet edge just to clean it up. Whatever you'd like. But I left mine just to the edge just the way it is. But um, any, any type of border will work. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, for this project, I use Yarnspirations Burnett Baby Marley. Slip it over here and read about it. It's a 100% polyester yarn. Now, it is a bulky number five, as you can see. It's very soft and it's very pretty. It actually made that blanket a little bit heavy, but that's fine though. Um, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, it's like not like super heavy or anything, but it's a little bit heavier of a blanket. Um, let's see. Now there are 221 yards. Now a full, full skein, a full, 
four skeins of this bulky weight five will get you that size almost 32 by 42. Um, of course you can use any yarn you want you don't have to use this yarn in case you're interested this did come from michael's the color is called blossom um i'm going to give you the multiple so if you want you don't if you don't have a bulky five yarn and you want to use like uh, say a medium weight four or even a lightweight three you can just uh go by the multiple and adjust your chain length to make your blanket any size that you choose so the candy clover stitch is done in a straight multiple of four and then I'm going to be using a size L, which is an eight millimeter crochet hook. Now th this hook is probably not a hook that not everybody has. So you don't really have to use this hook. Just remember if you use a smaller hook, like a six or six and a half millimeter, um, it'll just make your project smaller. So you might want to make more chains in multiples of four to make it to your desired length. If you, use, if you choose to use a bigger hook, like a nine millimeter, it'll make your project bigger. So if you want to use less multiples than me that's fine too so uh whatever hook size you use you just chain until you uh reach your desired length of your blanket just a multiple of four so you want to go ahead and start off with a slip knot on your hook now if you're using a bulky five and you want to achieve the same size that i did i started out with a chain of 84 so 84 is just a multiple of four. But like I said, if you don't have a bulky five or you wanna use a lighter weight yarn, any multiple of four will work. And you just chain until your desired length, however big you wanna make your blanket. Now this stitch is very easy. It's just a one row repeat. But first we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start row one. Row one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do four double crochets in the fourth stitch from the hook so we don't count the one that's in our hook so we count down one two three four and in that fourth chain we're going to work four double crochets so there's one two three Just like that now we are going to skip three stitches so I always got to you always want to pull back your uh, shell so uh, I call this a shell your four double crochets there so you can see the stitches there clearly because some of them sometimes it stretches it out so skip three one two three and in the next one we're going to do a single crochet And then we're going to work a chain of two, one, two, and then we're going to work four double crochet back into that same stitch that we just single crocheted into. So there's one, two, three and four and now we're going to repeat that again so kind of pull that shell back a little bit and we'll skip three again one two three and then the next one single crochet and then we're going to work a chain of two and we're going to go back into the same stitch and we're going to work four double crochets into that same stitch. And this is the pattern that we're going to repeat to the end of row one. Like that. Again, you want to skip three stitches, so put, pull that back. That make sure you're getting this skipping this first stitch. So one, two, three. Next one, single crochet. Chain two. 
go back into that same stitch and work four double crochets. So I'm going to repeat this pattern until I get to the end of the row. And it's kind of making those little shells. They look a little bit sideways, kind of cockeyed like that. All right, when you're coming to the end of the row, I just did my last little shell here. Um, you'll have four stitches that remain. So you want to skip three, and then we're going to end row one by single crocheting into the last stitch. Now, if you're following along with me, you should have 20 of these little shells. And that's counting that very first one here. You'll have a total of 20. Mom's just showing you on a smaller scale right now. But you should have a total of 20. Follow along with me. Now row two is the repeat row for the whole rest of the blanket. It's really easy to do, but it makes a really cool pattern, I think. So now this is how we're going to start every row from now on. We are going to start by working a chain of five. One, two, three four and five and then we're going to turn our work now we are going to work in the fourth chain of this chain five don't count the one that's on your hook so one two three four five so the second from the last chain we're going to go right into that and we're going to work four double crochets so there's one two three and there's four now what we're going to do is skip these four double crochets right here and in this chain chain two space we are going to single crochet so go right into that chain two space and single crochet and then we're going to chain two now what we're going to be doing is we're going to work four double crochets but we're not going to work it into the chain space we're going to work it into the side of the single crochet that we just made. So go ahead and yarn over like you're going to do a double crochet. And here is the single crochet. When I work into the side of it, I kind of grab that side stitch there. And then the side stitch that's on the back. It doesn't have to be exact, but just kind of like that. And then go right through the side of that single crochet. You can see there's the single crochet, how I went through it. And work four doubles. So there's one. And then you go in the same spot. You're going right in between that single, in the middle of that single crochet. Two. Three. And four. Just like that. And that's the repeat now for this row. So we're going to skip these next four stitches and into the next chain space right here. We're going to single crochet like that. Chain two, one, two. And then we're gonna work our four doubles into the side of the single. We're kind of like in the middle of it. So go ahead and yarn over and go right through the middle. I always try to get two loops if you can. The one in the front and the one in the back. And that will put you right into the middle of that single crochet. And then we work our four doubles right there. So there's one. Two. Three. And there's four. Repeat it again. Skip these next four. And into the next chain space we are single crocheting. chain two and then four doubles into the side of the single crochet here that we just made there's one two three and four and now we're going to repeat that pattern until we get to the end of the row. All right, I'm coming to the end of the row. I got this last um, shell here. What I want to do is end by 
single crochet into the top of this last chain here and that'll end a row two and you'll have the same amount of shells 20 if you're following along with me so that's kind of what it starts to look like and you just want to keep repeating row two until you get it the length that you want it to be so again I'll start row three by repeating row two we're going to chain five turn our work and in the fourth stitch of this chain we're going to work four double crochets And then we skip the next four doubles and in the next chain two space so right here single crochet into that space chain two and then four double crochets into the single crochet into the side of it just like we did before And then you just repeat it again so what we're going to do is we're just going to keep repeating rows row two actually just one row until we reach our blanket reaches about 42 inches or whatever length that you choose that you would like your blanket to be you want it bigger or smaller that's fine now when you get to the end of this row i'm just going to show you real quick i'm not going to go all the way to the end You'll notice that when you start, you just started this row, you notice that this is kind of hanging over. That's normal. It will hang over like that until you um, get to the end of this row and then turn back around and come back around. Once you put the single crochet here on the next row to end it, it'll straighten that row right up. So if you notice it hanging to the side, that's normal. I thought I was doing something wrong too, but I, I noticed that once I ended the next row that it pulls it straight. So that's, that's fine if it's flopping around, you're not doing anything wrong. So you just want to keep a repeating row two, like I said, until you get till you reach a, a total of about 42 inches. All right, and then once you get your desired link, that's it. That's what it looks like. I think it's pretty cool. I think it, the stitch looks really neat. It looks a little, um, a little 3D, not, not too much. You can see it lays flat a bit, but every other row pops just, just a tea tad, but it makes a really neat texture. The name itself is pretty cute, the candy clover. So I think it's adorable and I hope you are able to follow along. Okay. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed, don't forget to give it a share also, but that's it. And also don't forget to check out all my other tutorials. I have hundreds of crochet tutorials and lots of yarn talk. If you look over on the right hand side of the screen right now, I'm going to put a playlist of all my videos. So if you get a chance, maybe you want to go through there and check it out. Thanks everybody. Have a good day. Hi everybody. This is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this very quick, pretty quick and easy uh, blanket. You can make it a baby blanket size. You can make it throw size. You can make it full size, king size, whatever you want. Um, and it's very, it's like I said, it's very easy. As long as you know the basic stitches, you'll be able to do it. And I will give you the measurement of mine and show you how much yarn I used. Um, just to give you an idea. So my measures, mine's folded in half because my tables are not that big. Mine measures about 32 inches. One way. And about close to 40 inches the other. So, this is what the stitch looks like. Very easy. Makes little like tiny little poofs up, I guess. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you the yarn that I used. Okay, for this project, uh, I'm gonna be using Caron Baby Cakes. 
So this is a medium weight number four, 100% acrylic yarn. Um, no, it's, I'm sorry, 80, 82 acrylic, uh, 18 nylon, medium weight number four. You do not have to use this yarn. Um, you don't even have to use a medium weight number four because I'll give you your chain multiple and you can chain for as big as you want your blanket to be. But this is what I use, the color I have in my hand. It's called Lavender. And there are 560 yards per cake, and I went through two entire cakes for the size of blanket that I made. So, that. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a 6 millimeter crochet hook. Okay, so this, like I mentioned, it is a very uh, beginner-friendly project, and it has a one, it's just a one row repeat. So the multiple for this stitch, in case you want to make yours bigger or smaller, you're using a bigger, different yarn, or you want to use this stitch for something else, it is a multiple of three, so which your uh, beginning chain needs to be evenly divisible by three. I'm going to show you on a smaller scale, uh, but for my blanket, I chained 123 stitches. So if you're following along with me, and once you get your 123 stitches uh, made, you want to put two double crochets in the third stitch from the hook. So we don't count the one that's on our hook, and we count one, two, three. So in that, in that third stitch, you want to put two double crochets into it. There's one, and there is two, like that. And then we're going to skip two stitches and then we're going to work in the next so we skip skip now we're going to start the repeat of row one and we're going to make a shell into the next stitch now the shell is very easy to make so we skip our two and in the next stitch we're going to put one single crochet and two double crochets into the same stitch so that's the shell for this pattern one single and two doubles into the same stitch is what I'm calling a shell for this pattern. Now we're going to repeat that until we get to the end of the row. So we're going to skip two stitches, skip, skip, and we're going to put a shell into the next. So skip two and the next we're going to put one single crochet and two double crochets. There's one and there's two. So that's the shell. Again, skip two stitches, skip, skip, and in the next stitch, we're going to put one single crochet and two doubles. So that's the, the shell all into the same stitch. And we're going to repeat this pattern until we get to the end of the row. Skip two, skip, skip, and in the next we make the shell, which is one single and two doubles one and two so go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way until you get to the end and i'll meet back up with you at the end of the row okay i've made it to the end i just did a shell and i have three stitches that remain i want to skip two stitches and put a single crochet into the last stitch and that'll end row one and you should have a total if you're following along with me of 40 shells here 40 of the shells so now we're going to start row two and row two is actually the repeat row for the entire blanket so it's like i said it's very very easy so we are going to chain two and turn our work and we're going to put two double crochets right back into that same stitch so that single crochet from the previous row we're going to work two double crochets into that spot so there's one and there's two and now we're going to skip two stitches and we're going to work a shell into the next so if we skip two stitches skip skip the next stitch is going to be the single crochet of the shell from the previous row. So we're gonna work a shell into that stitch. So we're gonna go into that single crochet there and work a single crochet and two doubles. That's the shell into that same stitch like that. And then we're gonna repeat that until we get to the end of the row. So we're going to skip two stitches. So we're skipping the two doubles 
of the previous shell and in that single crochet of the previous shell we're going to work a shell so we're going to work one single and two doubles into that same stitch and again repeat skip two stitches skip skip and in the next which is the single crochet from the previous row we work a shell so single crochet and two doubles into that same stitch and we're going to repeat this until we get to the end of our row so i'll show you one more time we skip two skip skip and then will be where the single crochet is from the previous row and in that single crochet we make a shell so we single crochet into it and put two double crochets into it one and two so continue this until you get to the end all right when you make it i just did my last shell and i have three stitches here that remain i want to skip two stitches and I want to put a single crochet into the last stitch. Just like that. Again, you'll have 40 shells at the end of row two. And row two is the repeat row. So we're just gonna keep repeating that row. So let's do it again. So for row three, I'm just gonna repeat row two. So I'm gonna do a chain of two and turn my work. And then I'm going to put two double crochets right back into that very first stitch there, that single crochet from the previous row. Go ahead and work two doubles in it. Like that. And then we skip two, skip, skip. And in the next stitch, which is the single crochet from the previous row, we work a shell. So we're gonna work a single crochet and two doubles into that same spot. Again, skip two stitches, skip, skip, and in the next stitch, which is a single crochet from the previous row, we're going to work a shell. So we're going to go into it and single crochet and two doubles into the same stitch. So I'm just repeating what I did on row two until I get to the end of the row. And when you make it to the end here, I just did my last shell and you're you're at your last three stitches you want to go ahead and single crochet into this last stitch here it's actually that chain two that we started with the single crochet into the top of it there we go 40 shells still if you're following along with me and that's it we're just going to keep repeating row two and you repeat it until you get your blanket as long or as tall or as wide as you want it to be this uh, pattern can be worked either way. The shells look good running this way or even this way. It looks good both ways. Okay, like I said, I went ahead and I worked until I reached about 32 inches. Um, you can make it longer, of course. Wider, like I said, just in multiples of three for your beginning chain. Um, and that's it. Now, if you want... I actually just did it until I ran out of two of my crown kicks and then it made it about 32 inches tall. And if you want to make it, um, I put a border on it. I'm not going to put a border on it. I think it looks fine without one. Kind of just like a simple, really simple blanket. No border, no anything. But if you did want to put a border, maybe a simple single crochet border with the same color or maybe, a, you know, an anything you really want you know like i i really prefer mine i think this blanket being such a simple pattern and it has quite a bit of texture even though it's so simple um i'm gonna leave it simple and i'm not going to border it at all but by all, but by all means you can add a border single crochet border you can add a pico border you can add a shell border you know whatever you want to do if you're a beginner i would you know you can leave it just plain like i am it makes great gift for somebody whether it be a large blanket or a baby blanket so i hope you enjoyed my tutorial and i hope you were able to follow along um don't forget to give this video a like thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and check out all my other tutorials i have hundreds and hundreds of them if you make this or anything crochet or knitted it doesn't even have to be my design i'd love to see a picture of it you can come follow me on instagram hashtag me at bag crochet and i like to check out people's work 
even if it's not my designs i still like to look and you can um show me any yarn hauls i really like that stuff so <laughs> that's it everybody thanks for watching have a good day Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this baby blanket here. Now, uh, it measures approximately right at 32 by 32. So it's a square baby blanket. It's made with nine granny squares. As you can see, I'll go over the yarn I use in just a minute. It's actually rather easy to do as long, it's pretty much just all double crochet, front post double crochet, and single crochet if you can do those stitches you'll be able to make this blanket um, I'll show you how to sew it up and everything but yeah I think it turned out really cool I like it Evelyn's gonna like it so let's go ahead and get started on this okay for this project I am using Lion Brands Sesame Street one hat wonder um, they have these on their website four of these little characters so I'm using um, all four, uh, Big Bird, Oscar, Cookie Monster, and Elmo. So you'll need one of each of them. They are a medium weight number four, uh, polyester, 95 yards. So you'll need one of each of those, which will make four of the squares. And then I'm using Lion Brand Basic Stitch Anti-Peeling which is a medium weight number for also 100% uh, anti-peeling acrylic. Um, there are, you don't, you know, you don't have to use this yarn. Uh, any yarn, any yarn will work. There's 85 yards per skein and um, to make uh, the five uh, solid color blocks to go with the blanket. And I'm using this also to sew it together. You're going to need a total of three skeins of this so close close to 600 yards not quite but but pretty close uh, to that so as you can see what we're doing is we are making squares uh, we're gonna need nine total um, four of the uh, colored sesame street characters and I chose to make uh, five white and you know whatever color you want to use but medium weight four yarn and then we will sew them together. So every square is made the exact same way. Um, I made these squares the exact same way as I made the white squares. So they all look the same. So we'll go, I'll go ahead and show you how. Um, you're also gonna need a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. Okay, I'll show you how to start off remember every square is the same so even when you make your solid solid colored ones you make them the same as i'm getting ready to show you now if you're using these sesame street characters you need to take the head off first set it to the side and then you find your center probably with a lot of yarn barf coming out but yep okay here it is Okay, as always, we're going to start out with a slip knot on our hook. And if you prefer to use the magic circle here, that would be fine too. What we're going to do is chain three. And then we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch to form a ring. And now I'm going to work a chain of three. Now that chain of three is going to count as a double crochet here and for the rest of the of the square pattern. Now I'm going to work two more double crochets through the center of the ring. So counting that chain three will have a total of three double crochets there. Now we're going to work a chain of two. And that's going to form the cor the chain two is going to be the corner of one of one corner of our square. Now we're going to work back in the center of the ring again, and we're going to work three double crochets. So there's one, two, 
two, three. Now we're gonna chain two again, which will be another corner. Sometimes I gotta slide my work over as I go to make room. Three more doubles again. One, two, three, chain two. So now we have three sets of three doubles. We're gonna do it one more time. Three double crochets back into the ring. One, two, and three. Now, I'm not going to chain two to end. You can pull that tail there and that'll close up that center circle. This is how I end my rounds. I don't chain two and slip stitch. What I'm gonna do is do a half double crochet into the beginning chain three. So I'm gonna yarn over. Remember, I did no chains after these last three double crochets. Yarn over for a half double crochet, go into the top of that chain three, and then just work a half double crochet. And that's gonna act as your chain two space. And what it does, it brings you right in the center here. So you don't have to do any slip stitching over to get to the spot that you need. So we're going to start off again with a chain of three. One, two, three. And that's going to count as our double crochet. And now we're going to work right back into the chain two space and work one double crochet. Like that. Now the next stitch, we're going to work a front post double crochet. So that's actually, we're going to be working around this chain three right here. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to do a front post double crochet. Next stitch, we'll do a double, just a regular double crochet. Next stitch, front post double crochet. Like that. And now we're out at our chain two space. Chain two space has always worked the same. It's going to get two double crochets. One and two, and then we're gonna chain two, and then we're gonna work two more double crochets. There we go. So there you got your corner again made. And then we're gonna kind of repeat what we just did. So we're going to front post double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next. front post double into the next and we would keep repeating that until we got to our chain two space and here we are at it so we're going to work through the chain two space and we're going to work double crochet another double crochet so two double crochets we're going to chain two and then two more double crochets all into that chain space So there we have another corner made. Two doubles, chain two, two doubles. Now we're gonna start again. Front post, double crochet around the next stitch. Regular double crochet into the top of the next. Front post, double crochet around the next. And now we're at our chain two space. So we're gonna go ahead and go into it and work two double crochets. A chain of two and two double crochets and there we have our third corner made and again we're going to start off again front post double crochet into the next regular double into the next front post double into the next and now you can see we're at our chain two space well when we started the round we did a chain three and a double crochet into that space. So half of it is already finished. So what we need to, to do is go back into the space and work two double crochets. This is how we end every round. So now we have four, because we, we started by putting two in there and we ended by putting two. So now we're gonna end the round by half double crocheting into the top of the first, or the beginning chain three half double right in there just like that and that 
by doing that, it brings you into the center there. So like I said, so there's no slip stitching. At the end of round two, you'll have a total of 28 stitches. And then we'll start round three. You'll always have 16 more stitches than you did the previous round. So round one, we had 12. Round two, we now have 28. So we're gonna do round four, which is basically the same as round, or we're gonna do round three, which is basically the same as round two. We're gonna chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. Go back into this space and do one double crochet. So what we just did there, remember, is half of this corner and we'll finish up the other half at the end. So we'll start by working a front post double crochet into the next stitch and then regular double into the next. And we repeat this front post double, double regular double, front post double, regular double, all the way until we get to our next chain two space. So I'll do front post double in the next. What it's doing is our post will always be lined up. And then a regular double. Front post double. And a regular double. And your last stitch before the chain two space will always be a front post double crochet. And then when you get to your chain two space, you'll always work the same thing. Two double crochets, there's one and two. And then we'll chain two, go back in and work two more double crochets, just like that. And now we'll repeat. Your first stitch after your chain, or your corner here will always be a front post double crochet. So you start with a front post double and a regular double. front post double and a regular double front post and the regular and my last one is going to be a front post double we're at our chain two space we work two doubles chain two and two more doubles and then we're going to repeat it again all the way around until we get back here to where we started front post double regular double front post regular remember your front post doubles are going to line up you always know you're putting it in the right spot because they'll start to line up i know this yarn's a little busy but you definitely wouldn't have been able to see that white yarn on my white background. So just kind of repeat the uh, front post double crochet, regular double crochet, front post double crochet, regular double crochet until you get to this corner. And when you get here, you do your two doubles, chain two, two doubles, and then you start again with the front post double crochet, regular double crochet, repeat, and I'll meet you back here at the end of the round. All right, I have made it to the end here of round three, and my last stitch there was the front post double crochet and I'm at this corner now remember the how we always end every round we already have half of the corner done from where we started with the two double crochets so we need to go back into that chain two space and finish it by putting the other two double crochets that go into the corner and then we end the round by half double crocheting into the top of that chain three just like that and then we start again so it's just a repeat of row three. Um, it just keeps getting bigger. You should have a total of 44 stitches now. Um, every, every round will have, like I said, 16 more stitches than the previous round. So you want to go ahead and keep repeating round three until you get a total. You've completed seven rounds. And then I'll meet back up with you. Um, and then the last two rounds will be different. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to start round four by chaining three. I'm just going to do the same thing I did for round three, for round four. The only difference is I'm going to have 16 more stitches than I did the previous round. Um, so I'm going to finish out uh, round seven just like this, and then I'll meet back up with you. 
Okay, so I'm coming to the end of round seven. If your work is flipping up like this, it's okay. Don't worry about that. Um, those, that's just the, due to the post stitches. Uh, we'll get that fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and end round seven like we ended all the other rounds. I'm going to put two double crochets here in this last chain, last chain space and half double crochet into the beginning chain three. Add in round seven and you should have 108 stitches now. All right, now rounds eight and nine are going to be the final rounds and they're done the exact same way. So round eight, we start out by chaining three and working a double crochet right back into the chain space just like we did before. Now what we're gonna do is just do straight one double crochet in every stitch until we get to our next chain two space. We won't be doing any more post stitches. So you want to make sure you go into this chain three here, the first chain three, go right into the top of it and double crochet. And then the next stitch, it looks a little stretched, but you got to make sure you get that one too. Otherwise your count will be off. And then you just work across putting one double crochet in every stitch until you get to your next chain two space. Okay, I've made it to my first chain two space. Now we're going to do the same thing that we've always done here. Is work two double crochets. Chain two. Two more double crochets. And then we will continue working one double crochet in every stitch across. Always remember to kind of pull this back and get this first stitch because sometimes it hides underneath those corner stitches. So one double on every stitch until we get to our next chain two space. And then in the chain two space, it's two doubles, chain two, two doubles. And then you continue the one double crochet in every stitch. And you wanna work this until you get back to your starting point. So now it's just rounds of double crochet, no post stitches. This is kind of what starts to look like. Okay, I'm coming to the end of round eight and we're gonna end it just as we did all the other rounds. So two double crochets into the last chain two space. Oops, sorry about that, drop that one. It happens. So there's two doubles there. And then we end by a half double crocheting into our beginning chain three. That'll end round eight, 16 more stitches than you had before. Now round nine is just a repeat of round eight. So it's just the double crochet round again. So chain three for round nine. This is the final round. Go right back into the same spot and double crochet. And remember you gotta go in to the chain space and double, or the chain three space and double crochet. And this stitch right here, it gets hidden. You gotta make sure you get him. He gets really tiny and stretched, but there we go. And now we continue working one double crochet, just like we did before in every stitch, and two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in each of the quarters. And I will repeat this until I get back around to my starting point. Okay, I've made it to the end of round nine. This is our last and final round. I put my two double crochets there into that last chain two space. And I'm gonna end like always, a half double crochet into the beginning chain three. And then clip your yarn, tie off. There we go, it's finished. Now, if you're one, uh, if you're the type to block your work, maybe you wanna block uh, your squares before you add the heads on them and before you sew them together um that's up to you i do not block my work um if you don't know what blocking is there's youtube videos on on it um but anyways so i have four of the sesame streets and then five 
of my solids. So nine total squares all done the same. So even if you don't have these Sesame Streets, you could still do these squares and you know, whatever colors you want. But I'm gonna go ahead, now I don't really know how to do this, like the correct way, I'll just kind of, <laughs> I think you just do it however you can do it. So what I'm gonna do is go through the center and I'm gonna grab these two loops that's on Big Bird and pull them through like that. And then I'm gonna go, well you can do this any way I guess to make your head stay on. Go back, wait a minute. I'm gonna wrap these around my hook and I'm gonna pull them back through a little bit away from that hole. Oh my gosh, I gotta go from this side. It's difficult, it's difficult. I'm gonna go in the side here and then pull them. Those black things back through. Now I think I'm gonna pull his head through like that. Now I'm gonna take and pull my black string through again one more time. I don't know really what to do, but now he's pulled tight. Now I'm gonna take it and tie it on the back with my tail that I had at the beginning. Tie it really tight. As tight as I can get it. That's how I do it, but you can do it any way you want. I don't know if this is correct, but <laughs> I'm winging it. But I'm gonna tie it in a few knots. And then what I'll do is take my yarn needle and weave in these tails. And then um, I'm going to use fabric glue and kind of glue around, uh, wash, make sure you get fabric glue. I, I had to order mine, I don't have it here yet. Um, off Amazon, I ordered mine. Make sure you get fabric glue that is, uh, can be put in a washing machine, you know. Um, but once my fabric glue comes, I'll just put a couple little dollops here and here, you know, and press his head down until he holds. And that way he won't be flopping around. That's what I'm going to do. So that's, that's that. If, <laughs> I don't know that's, if that's correct, but that's the way I did it. So now let's sew it together. What do you say? I hopefully, I don't have a big, a lot of room, but I'll show you what I got so far. Now you can lay, I'll show you how I laid mine out to be sewn together. So, so I have, let me step back and show you. So I have white, Elmo white, Oscar white, Grover, and then I'll put Big Bird here, and then white and white. That's how I'm going to sew mine together. Let me get my other two whites. There we go. So it'll look something like that, of course, and I'm going to go around it with some single crochet. So that's how mine's going to be sewn together with the four uh, Sesame Streets. So let's go ahead and get to how we sew it together. So let me move some of this stuff so I can set my camera back down. Okay. Now, people sew squares together differently. There are many, many, many ways you can do it. You can single crochet squares together. You can use fancy stitches to crochet them together. You can use a yarn needle and a piece of yarn to sew them together. I'm going to slip stitch mine together. And as you can see, I have started just so I can show you. Now I slip stitch mine in a manner of where I only go through one loop of each piece. And that creates the divot here that you see on the front, just to add a decoration. That's what I usually do when I sew my squares together. It's not anything necessary, but I think it just adds something to it. So I have those three sewn together. Now I'm gonna sew my other ones together. Oh, it's such, it's such a mess here. So I need, well, when you sew them like that, you need to make sure that you're sewing them um, wrong side. So Oscar here is facing up. So you need to take your white square or whatever color you have and put the wrong side facing down. And this white square is facing up, and then I'm going to take my big bird and face him down, wrong side. And now 
Oh, gosh. gracious. Grover is facing up, and I'm going to take my last white square and face it down like that. Okay, so the reason why we sew it together like that is so when we flip it open, the right sides will be facing and the seam of the slip stitch will be on the back of the blanket. So go ahead and I'm going to use my white yarn that I use to, as my main color, to slip stitch it together and my crochet hook. So I'm going to go ahead and start in the corner here of my first two squares. I'm going to go through the chain one space of the corner of the first square and the same chain one space at the corner of the square back here. Go in. I'm going to chain one. Now I'm going to slip stitch all the way across, but I'm only going to be going through one loop on each piece. So I'm going to go to the next stitch right here. I'm going to go into, you see how the loop, each stitch has two loops. The one closest to you is your front loop. The one furthest away is the back loop. On this piece, I'm only going through the front loop. And then on the exact same stitch on your other piece, I'm going to only go through the back loop. And then I will slip stitch that together. You want to make sure you keep your stitches aligned because they're the there are the exact same number of stitches on every square. That way your you know your piece won't be crooked when you sew it together. So I'm going to go to the next stitch and I'm going to go through the front loop of the next stitch. And then this piece back here, I'm going to go the back loop only, that piece and slip stitch. And this is what I'm going to do all the way across. Front loop. I'm going to go to the next piece and back loop only and slip stitch. But by all means, if you want to, uh, if you know a different way to sew your squares together, you do it however, as long as they're sewn together. I think that's all that matters. You know, however you do it. Sometimes I use a yarn needle. Front loop. Back loop. Front loop back loop. I'm going to do this until my piece, these, these two squares are sewn together. Front loop, back loop. Front loop, back loop. Stop for a second. Now when you flip it inside out, you can see how nice that uh, divot looks there. Or that little ridge just gives a little extra something. But if you would prefer to go through both loops, you know, same thing. Still getting sewed together. That's completely up to you. So I'm going to continue sewing up this square here in the same manner that I've been doing. Front loop on this piece. Back loop on the next. Okay, I'm coming to the end of these two squares being sewn up. So I have one stitch that remains on each piece. They should be exact. You should have the exact same number remaining on each piece. So I'm going to go through the front loop on this one. And the back loop on this one. And now I'm going, I have the chain two space. So I'm going to go through one stitch on the chain two space on this piece. And then one stitch of the chain two space on this piece and slip stitch. Now I'm just going to continue by starting my next two pieces. I'm not going to clip my yarn and uh, sew this one separate. Some people do that. They sew just two, you know, two squares at a time. That's fine if you want to do that. I like to go continue, go across, just keep going across until they're all sewed together. But like I said, if you want to do it the other way, that's fine too. So I would just go start the same I'd go through first square or first chain space on this piece first chain space on this piece and get my yarn that I'm using and pull it tight and slip stitch it there we go and now I'm going to continue 
doing doing it the same way first stitch on this piece back stitch on this piece slip stitch and I'm gonna do this all the way across this square And then I will do it all the way across at the last square. Okay, I've made it to the end and I'm at my chain two spaces. I'm going to go through one stitch on the chain two space here. One stitch on the chain two space in the, on the other piece. Slip stitch it together. And I'm going to tie that off. Clip my yarn. Now. We can unfold our piece and see what it starts to look like. There we go. <clears throat> I wish I had more room for you, but I don't. So I have already, like I said previously, sewed up one portion. So, as you can see, it's sewed all the way across there and all the way across there. Now, I'm going to sew all the way down here and all the way down there. And then the sewing will be done, and then I'll have to put a border on it. But, so again, what I'm going to do to sew this up is the same way as I sewed it up a while ago. I'm just going to make sure everything is flipped. These are flipped the wrong side out. And then I will start right over here and the same way and sew it all the way up and then i will do the same thing once that's sewed up you'll be able to flip this side over so this one all the way up and then that'll be all the sewing that needs to be done all right i'll show you what mine looks like it's not the prettiest thing yet as you can see some of this you know it's not perfect it's not perfect we're gonna go around and try to clean up these edges the best that we can but it's all sewn up you know when it comes to crochet Sewing granny squares together is my least favorite thing. I mean, I'd rather sew in a, a million tails and then sew, sew granny squares together. But I did it. It's done. So, now let's border it. Now, I'm going to use a single crochet. First, I'm going to go around it in my main color, which is white. And then I'm going to use these leftover pieces and go around it uh, just to add some contrast to it. The leftover pieces from my... Uh, Sesame Street people. So let me get this folded up in a way here so, that, so I can get my camera set up. Okay, so first I'm going to start with my white. And I'm going to start in the corner of one of my squares. And I am going to put, I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to put two single crochets into this first corner stitch. Like that. And now I'm going to work one single crochet in every stitch across this first square. All the way across until we get here to where these two squares meet and there's a bit of a divot. We'll have to try to even that out the best that we can. So what I'm going to do, like I said, is just work one single crochet in every stitch until I get to where my two next two squares are joined. All right, so I've made it here to the divot here of where my two squares meet up. I'm gonna try to crochet these tails in as I go too so I don't have so many to hide. So you see this chain two space? I'm gonna work two half double crochets into that first chain two space, half doubles. And then I'm going to jump to the next chain two space of the next square and work two half doubles into that spot. like that and now I will continue working one single crochet in every stitch across my little Oscar square until I get to where my next two squares meet up and I'll do the same thing two half doubles there into the chain two spaces and it kind of straightened it out a bit you know it made it look a little cleaner in my opinion I think that looks a little bit you know it looks better so I'm going to work across one single crochet in every stitch again. 
until I get to where my next two squares meet up. All right, I have made it to where my next two squares meet up. So here's the chain two spaces. I'm gonna do two half double crochets into the first chain space on this piece. And then I'm gonna jump over here to the next chain two space of the next piece or the next square and work two half double crochets into that one. Kind of straighten them out a bit. And now I'll continue working one single crochet in every stitch until I get let's see over here to the next chain two space which will be the corner of our blanket so it those by doing those half doubles in the corners there like I said it straightens out a bit it's not perfect but it won't be it's homemade no one expects perfection if they wanted that they'd buy it from a store and even then it wouldn't probably probably wouldn't be perfect so go ahead and continue across one single on every stitch until you get to the next chain two space all right i've made it to my next chain two space which is the corner of the blanket so in this corner i'm going to put four single crochets there's one two three and four so that's what we're going to put in every corner. Now we did start the first one out with two, but we'll end by putting two into that one. So it will be a total of four. But I got four in there. And now I'm going to continue. Make sure you pull that back and get this next one. Or this stitch right here. Putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get to where my next two pieces meet. So I'm just going to continue this pattern that we're doing all the way around my whole blanket so i'll continue one single crochet in every stitch across here and then when i get to these two chain two spaces two half doubles here two half doubles here single crochet across two half doubles in this chain two space two half doubles in this single crochet in every stitch across you get to the corner four single crochets into this corner stitch and then you continue one single crochet in every stitch until you get to here two half doubles here in that chain space two half doubles in that chain space and we're just kind of keep repeating that so it's one single crochet in every stitch two half doubles in each of the chain two spaces that the squares meet up and four single crochets in the corners all right i've made it back to my starting point now remember we started with two single crochets into that chain two space i'm going to go ahead and end with two single crochets into that chain two space so we have a total of four and i'm going to end by slip stitching into my first single crochet and then i will clip this yarn tie it off now if you want to be done now you can I'm going to go around it again one more time with another row of single crochet uh, to use up these scrap pieces that I have left over from my um, Sesame Street characters and to give it a little extra color. But otherwise, if you want it to be done, it can be done. So I'm just going to start again in a corner. It doesn't matter which corner. But what I am going to do is, if you're following along with me and you're using the same sesame street characters you see how um cookie monsters on this side i'm going to use the scraps from cookie monster and go along th the side that he's on and then whenever i get over here to elmo i'll use the scraps left from elmo ain't much there hopefully there's enough and i'll do his side and then i'll use the scraps that are left from oscar and that's what i'll line his side with so Go ahead and start over here with Grover, or not Grover, Cookie Monster. I'm all messed up on my Sesame Street characters. Okay, so 
gonna start I'm gonna do basically the same thing except for I'm not gonna be doing any half doubles here this is gonna be single crochet now so we put four single crochets into the corner okay so why don't we start in the middle okay so there's four start in the if you count over from this side the third one so start in, in that one so there'll be this one and then one more in the corner and then you'll start the ones that are not in the corner so start in the uh third one from this side so one two three and chain one and we're going to put two single crochets into that single crochet and the reason why we're going to do that it just helps the corners lay flatter two singles into that one and now I'm just going to work along and put one single crochet in every single stitch all the way across the entire, this entire side of Cookie Monsters until I get to my other white square, the corner of that. And then we'll kind of do a color switch and If you want to use, I mean, remember, you don't have to, to do it. If you want to use a different color to border it in, all one solid color, that's fine. I'm just trying to use up these scraps. That's why I'm doing this. So, all the way across, one single in every stitch. No more half doubles or anything like that. Until we get all the way across this one side, and I'll meet back up with you at the next corner and I'll show you what we're going to do there. All right, I've come and I've made it to my four stitches in the corner. Now we're going to work in two of them and then we're going to switch colors. So we'll go into the first one and single crochet one time. And we'll go into the next one and we're going to put two single crochets into that one. But we're going to switch colors on the second single crochet. So we're getting ready to work down Elmo's side. So I'm going to bring in Elmo's color. Remember, two single crochets into this stitch. So I'm going to go into the stitch, like I'm going to do a single crochet, draw up a loop, and then I'm going to drop the blue yarn, pick up Elmo's color of yarn, and go ahead and pull it through like that. And now I will start with Elmo's color yarn. In the next stitch, I'll put two single crochets into that stitch. While I'm trying to wrestle down tails. Because there's so many. Okay. So two single crochets in that corner stitch. And now there's one more corner stitch left. It just gets one single crochet. So the corner stitches where there's four gets one single crochet in the first one, two in the next, two in the next, then one in the last. If that makes sense. That just helps the corner lay flat. Now I'm going to continue with this color all the way across until I get to my next corner. And then I'm going to switch colors the same way. Remember, you don't have to do it this way. You can just do one solid color. I might even run out of this color of yarn and I'll have to substitute, but that's okay. I'll figure something out. But I'm going to continue across until I get to my next color or my next corner and we'll switch colors again. All right, I've made it to the corner again. My next color that I need to switch to is my Oscar color green. So I'm at my four corners, my four stitches in the corner. I'm going to single crochet one time into the first one, two times into the next one, but we're gonna switch colors. So there's one, and now I'm going in the same stitch and doing another single crochet, but I'm gonna switch colors here. So I'm gonna go in and draw up the loop, drop my Elmo color, grab my Oscar color, and pull it through like that. 
and start with the, my Oscar color into the next stitch. Again, while I'm trying to hide all these tails and whatnot. Okay. I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay. Now I need to go into the next single crochet and put two single crochets in it. And then the next one, the last one in the corner and put one single crochet. So remember the four corners gets, or the four single crochets in the corner get one single crochet in the first one, two in the next, two in the next, and then one in the last, just to keep the corners flat. Now I'm going to continue this process again. One single crochet in every stitch until I make it back to my next corner. And then I'll switch colors again in the same manner, my last color. And then I'll continue one single crochet in every stitch until I get back to my starting point. And then I will meet you back up at the starting where we started doing this. All right, I have made it to the end and I've made it to my last two stitches. They're the two that are in the corner. So my first one gets one single crochet. My last one gets two single crochets. And I'm going to end this round by slip stitching into my first single crochet over here. And then I am going to clip that off. It's finished, it's finished, it's finished. Hey, it's finished. Well, not quite yet. I got a lot of hot tails to hide. But other than that, it's finished. Let's check it out. See what she looks like. It's kind of big, but big for my table, I mean, but I'll have to move my camera. I'll move my camera. There it is. Oh, it really turned out cute. I like it. Now this is another time I suggested earlier, if you wanted to block your squares before you sew them together, that would have been a good time. This is another time, if you are one that blocks your work, you can block it. I don't block, I don't worry about it. Evelyn's gonna take it and waller it all around my daughter in bed with it anyways. So blocking serves me no purpose, but that's it. I really like it, I think it turned out awesome. I hope you guys like it too. If you like it, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And I hope you guys are able to follow along okay. And if you make this, even if you don't make it with Sesame Street ones. Say you just use uh, this design in different color squares or all the same squares. Show me a picture. You can show me a picture on my Facebook page or my Instagram. Both those links are below in the description box. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye bye. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. Now today I'm going to show you how to make this baby blanket here. It's pretty big. Um, it's approximately 32 inches by 42 inches. And I just fold in half here. Here's the stitch that I used. And then it's got some ruffle or edging, ruffle V stitch edging. Here's what the back looks like. It's pretty plain on the back. That's it. Um, don't forget to, uh, I wanted to remind you not to forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That way you never miss an update. So let's go ahead and get started on this. The Red Heart Dreamy, which is a bulky number five, 100% acrylic yarn. Now, it, even though it's a 100% acrylic, it does have a little bit of a fuzz on it. As you can probably see, it makes it look a little bit wooly. It is nice and soft, and even though it is a bulky five, I would consider this to be a bulky five, but a thinner bulky bulky five. Um, there are 466 yards per skein, and you're going to need two for the main collar, and I'm using rows for mine, and then for the edging, you know, you'll need just need one skein, but you won't use it all. I am going to be using ivory for that but of course you can use any colors 
that you wish. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. Okay, you wanna start off with a chain of 87. Now this stitch is done in a multiple of two plus one in case you wanna make yours bigger or smaller. But I started off with a chain of 87. So what you wanna do once you get your chain of 87 done, you wanna go ahead and do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. So we don't count the one that's on our hook. So we go one, two, three in the fourth stitch, do a double crochet. And now I'm gonna do one double crochet in every single stitch for the length of the chain. Just like that. One double in every stitch all the way until you get to the end of your chain. Okay, once you make it to the end of row one, you should now have a total of 85 stitches. And that is including this little chain here on the end. He counts as a stitch. So counting him, you should have a total of 85. So for row two, what we're gonna do is chain one and turn our work. Now that chain one that we did does not count as anything. So we're gonna put one single crochet right back into the same stitch, the very first one. And now we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're going to slip stitch into the next. And that's kind of our repeat. Now we're gonna double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're gonna slip stitch into the next. Double crochet into the next. and then slip stitch into the next. Double crochet, and then slip stitch. And we're gonna keep repeating this, a double crochet, slip stitch, until we get to our last stitch of the row. Oops. Oh, I did it again. Just like that. All the way to the end. And that's what it kind of looks like on the other side. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row two. And I did a double crochet was the last one I did. And then I got one more stitch left. And this is that little chain on the end that we talked about from the last row. Go ahead and slip, or I'm sorry, go ahead and single crochet into the top of this last stitch. So right in the top of the chain of the last stitch here. Just like that. And now you should have a total of 85 stitches still. You should always have 85 stitches. So for row three, we're gonna chain one and turn our work. And work that chain one does not count as anything. So we're gonna work right back into the very first stitch and we're gonna put a double crochet. And we're gonna work one double crochet in every stitch across till we get to the end of the row. So a double crochet into the next stitch and then a double crochet into that next stitch which is a, which is a slip stitch so make sure you get that sometimes it's 
hard to see, but you gotta make sure you get it. Double crochet into the next stitch. So right on top of the next stitch right there. Double crochet into the next stitch, which is that slip stitch right there. It's kind of hard to see, but you got to make sure you get it. And then double crochet into the next stitch. And then that next slip stitch. And then the next stitch. And then the next slip stitch. It's always a little tighter that slip stitch is to go into. And then the next. And then the next slip stitch. So we're just going to repeat this one double crochet in every stitch until we get to the end of the row. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row three and I'm at my last stitch here, so I want to double crochet into the top of that last stitch. And at the end of row three, you still should have 85 stitches. So that's kind of what it starts to look like. And that's the repeat now. You just repeat rows two and three. Just keep repeating two and three until you get your blanket as tall as you want it to be. So remember for row two, we started by chaining one and we turned and that chain one didn't count as anything. So we put one single crochet right back into that very first stitch and then we double crocheted into the next stitch and slip stitch into the next. Double crochet into the next. And slip stitched into the next. And we just repeated that to the end. Double crochet. That just keeps happening to me. And then slip stitched. And then when we got to the end, we just put one single crochet into the last stitch. And then we repeated the double crochet row again. So that's it. Just keep re repeating rows two and three until you get your blanket as tall as you want it to be. Now, I'm not quite sure how many rows I'm going to do, but I'm going to get started on it. And I'll let you know how many I do whenever I get finished here in just a second. Okay, I went ahead and did 87 rows all together total from row one all the way to the end now you can do more if you'd like but you might need more yarn than what i initially said in the beginning and you want to end in a, a row of double crochet the last row to be a row of double crochet now don't tie off now we're going to work on the edging so we're just going to continue from where we left off what i'm going to do is chain one and now i'm going to evenly space out single crochets all the way down and all around the entire blanket now you don't have to have the exact same number i mean there's no certain number so you just want to kind of try to get them evenly as spaced as possible so kind of a rule that i go by is every double crochet there is on the side i usually put two single crochets and then you'll probably put one right here where this single crochet is so i'll go ahead and start right here is a double so i'll probably go ahead and put two double crochets through that one or two single crochets I'm sorry I did not mean to say double and then the next stitch kind of right here is a single just kind of go through that and then the next stitch is going to be a double crochet row so you'll put two singles through where that double crochet is it's kind of fuzzy you can't really tell can you and then the next row is single crochet here and then the next row you can see is a double crochet row so I'll put two single crochets on this last double crochet but anyways it doesn't have to be exact there's no certain number that you have to end with 
the trim is going to work out or the yeah the edging that I put on is going to work out um, regardless of how many stitches you have so just kind of evenly space out single crochets all the way around the best that you can that's all you can do just do the best that you can so I'm going to go ahead and work down this side And all this is doing is cleaning up the edge so we can add the uh, white white edging on it. I'm going to meet you down here at this first corner. Okay, now once you make it to the first corner, all you want to do is put three single crochets up here into the corner. Three in the same stitch. And that will round the corner out and make it, make it lay flat so it doesn't stick up. So I put three there in the same stitch. And now I'm just going to continue working across the short side now. You can probably kind of see where the stitches go a little better when you're working on the short side of the blanket. Putting one single crochet in every stitch. Now I'm going to continue working my one single crochet in every stitch, evenly spacing them out on the other sides where you can't hardly tell where they're supposed to go, and, and putting three single crochets in each of the corners. And I'm going to do this all the way around the blanket. So when I get to my next corner, I'll put three single crochets in it, and then I'll continue working, evenly spacing out one single crochet um, up the other long side, and then I'll put three single crochets in the next corner, and I will continue that until I get back to my starting point, and I'll meet you there when I get back around. Just like that. Okay, I have made it all the way around my whole blanket with my single crochet, and I'm at my last stitch. What you want to do is make sure you put three single crochets into your last stitch, your last corner, and then we're going to slip stitch in our first single crochet over here. Remember, we chained one, which is right here, and then we started single crocheting. So not into the chain one, but the first single crochet, and then you can tie this off. Now I'm not going to even count the single crochets around because it does not matter how many you have and I know that yours will be different than mine because well, like, we, like we just evenly spaced them, all, spaced them out and it's just not going to be exact and that's okay. It doesn't matter. So now I'm going to start with my white color and you can start anywhere that you want. Make sure you start with the right side of your work facing you. I'm going to start opposite corner that way when I get around. <laughs> to this tail, I can just crochet it in. I don't have to hide it later. So with the right side of your work facing you, get your whatever color you're using for the trim. I'm going to bedging. I'm going to be using the white. Okay, you want to start in any stitch. I probably just start right up here into the corner, but it doesn't really matter where you start. I'm going to chain one. Now I'm going to go back into that same stitch and I'm going to do a double crochet, a chain one, and another double crochet. So I, that was just, what I did was a V-stitch. And I'm going to do a V-stitch in every single, single crochet <clears throat> all the way around. So I'm going to go directly into the next stitch and do a V-stitch. So I'm going to do a double crochet, a chain of one, and another double crochet and then the next stitch the same thing double chain one double and then the next one same thing double chain one and double so I'm going to do the V in every stitch all the way around. Now when you get to the corners you don't have to do anything different. Nothing special. Just work the V-stitch right around the corners. No extra stitches or anything. Now it might get a little wavy and that's what it's supposed to do. So when it does that don't worry about it. That's what we want. So I'm going to continue working a V-stitch in every single one of these single crochets all around the entire blanket until I make it back around to the beginning.
just like that. You see mine starting to get a little wavy and that is fine. Okay, I have made it back around to my starting point on my edging. So what I'm going to do, I just did my last V stitch there. I'm going to end with a slip stitch into the first double crochet of my first V stitch. Now I'm going to go around again. So I want to slip stitch right into this chain one space of the first V stitch. And then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to work a V stitch into that chain one space. So right into the space. I'm going to do a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet. And now I'm going to jump to the chain one space of the next V stitch, not in between the V stitches, the chain one space of the V stitch. So right here and do a V stitch. So right through it, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Then I'm going to jump to my next V stitch, the chain one space, and do a V stitch right through that chain one space. And that's what I'm going to repeat all the way around. It's kind of like what we just did, only this time we're working in the chain one space of the V's. So I'll jump to my, into the middle of my next V stitch and do another V stitch. next one right here jump to your next one V stitch in it next one and I'm going to continue this all the way around until I get back to the beginning it's one V stitch in the chain one space of the V stitch from the previous row. So you can look at it and see that my V stitches are lined up now. Let's see, right on top of each other. So I'm gonna do that all the way around my blanket until I get back right over here to my starting point. Okay, I have made it back around my second time with the V stitches. And again, we're going to end with a slip stitch into the first double crochet of the first V stitch. And then you can tie this off. Unless, of course, you want to go around again. That's up to you. Might need more yarn, though, than what I said. But that is it. Your blanket, after you hide that tail or any other tails, your blanket is done. I think it turned out really cute. Actually really cute so I hope you enjoyed my tutorial please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already that way you never miss an update on any of my tutorials until next time have a good day